Just like every year it feels like the Christmas adverts come out earlier and earlier, it also feels like the lists of the best books of the year come out earlier and earlier every year, doesn't it? Hey everyone, how are you doing? Uh, Time Magazine just published their uh, 100 best books of the year recently and a, a few different publications have already put out their best books of the year and like um, on my first reaction it was sort of like, like oh it's, it's like not even December yet, can you really publish a list like this? But I guess it makes sense that uh, journalists do this because, uh, you know, they, they know all the books that are coming out for the year and obviously it's not a single person making these lists, it's a compendium of journalists and stuff. And, um, and actually I find it quite useful going through these. I mean obviously they bring them out because people want ideas of what to buy for Christmas and things like that, but I find it quite useful as sort of like a checkpoint of like, like oh what are the books that I haven't got to yet. And, um, and so I thought I'd go through Time Magazine's um, one of, of which ones I've read, um, which ones I still want to read, um, which ones I think maybe aren't worth reading so much or, or at least I wouldn't put them on these lists. And, um, and then there are some that I've never heard of. I mean obviously this is a US publication so some of these are books which have only come out in the US and not come out in the UK. Yet. So, um, so I just don't know about them as much. So I'd find it really interesting too to get your reactions of um, any of these books. If I've not read any of them, if you think I should really get to them, um, let me know in the comments below. Or if, um, if you agree with any of these, if you think these are some of the best books of the year. Um, and it's interesting how they broke them down into different categories. So for the first 50 books or so, a little over 50, it's just fiction and then it goes into different kinds of non-fiction of essays and memoir and stuff. But it's interesting too how they've broken up um, the first two big fiction categories of realistic fiction and then suspense and altered worlds. So first off in realistic fiction there's All This Could Be Yours by Jamie Attenberg, um, which I've not heard of before. I think this has only come out in the US. Then there's Doxology by Nell Zink and this is a novel I've been wanting to read but I've heard really mixed things about it so I'm not really sure and I've never read a Nell Zink novel before so I'm not sure if this is would be the best place to start or if I should start with another one of her books. Then there is Dax Newburyport by Lucy Elman and you know I'm a big fan of this novel. I um, was hoping it would win uh, the Booker Prize this year and uh, and yeah I think it's I, I, I keep getting, getting put in this position of, of people are like really is it worth reading this like thousand page novel like and who are so intimidated by it and I feel like there's nothing I can really say that will get people over that other than saying that once I got into this novel I wasn't looking at page numbers anymore. I was so involved and in love with it I just uh, yeah I, I just kept reading and wasn't even paying attention to how far I got and you know and I think that's the thing with big books as well that even though they're intimidating on the outset if it's a story you really love and uh, a character you're really connected to you'll you just want to keep reading on like no matter how long it is and and that's sort of the way it is and I definitely think this book falls into that category of, of being worth that but uh, but you know I, I know other people have opinions and, and weren't as in love with it as as I was but I think a lot of people have been really positive about it. People have taken the plunge and, and gone into it like that. Um, then there is The Dutch House by Ann Patchett which is another novel I, I really really loved. Um, I read it a few weeks ago and, and just um, yeah I thought it was such an enthralling story even though not a lot happens in it. I mean quite a lot actually does happen and there's a lot of plot twists and stuff and I've seen some people who are quite critical of the end but um, but the, the characters and the overall story I think is so strong and good. There is Find Me by Andre Osman which is I think probably one of the most anticipated novels of the year. I mean it's been crazy. I made a, a review video about this and it's had um, I think 56,000 views now which is by far the my most viewed video ever so I think people are really into this but also now that it's out there are some really critical reactions to it. Some 
Um, and you know, and I, I found I enjoyed aspects of it, but it's certainly not a perfect book. There are aspects of it which I think don't work so well, and just sort of the way he writes in general. But um, but yeah, I, I I did find it a moving experience, and and a lot of the ideas in it are really interesting. So make up your own mind. I, I'll be really interested to hear a lot more people's reactions to to find me now that it's out. Then there is Fleischman is in trouble by Taffy. Broad, Brodesser Ackner, and um, this is a novel I've seen in bookstores, and I keep being tempted to buy it. I almost buy it. Um, I just, I, I think it sounds really intriguing, and I like the cover, um, but, uh, but yeah, I haven't taken the plunge and bought it yet, so if you've read it, let me know what you think of it. Um, there is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, the real winner of the Booker Prize uh, this year, um, which is such a great novel and it's only just come out in America. Um, so it's it's really exciting um, seeing more people's reactions to it now. It came out in the UK, I think back in May or, or June or so. I, I think it's so many enthralling stories in this, so many interesting characters, and how they link up is so interesting. And, and I love that form of novel of, of interconnected short stories. And whenever Bernadine Evaristo talks about this, she sounds quite defensive when people describe it as short stories. She's like, it's not short stories, it's a novel. And it, but it's like, you know, no, it really is short stories. I mean, they are connected definitely in, in the, the way the characters overlap and, and, and getting different perspectives on characters from internally and then externally. Um, it's so interesting, but, um, but yeah, the, the format, you know, basically it is uh, short stories. And there is Valeria Luiselli's novel, Lost Children Archive, um, published in the UK earlier this year. And I, I love this novel so much. And it, this, it feels, um, it's gotten prize nods. It's been on the long list for the Women's Prize and the Booker Prize, but not been shortlisted, which I feel like is a real shame. Um, there are definitely books on the shortlist of both of those prizes that I thought this deserved a place over them, but that's just my opinion. The Man Who Saw Everything by Deborah Levy, and this novel, which I think definitely the UK cover for this is much more beautiful than the US cover. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. It's just really beautiful. Um, there's several of these books, which I think the UK cover is better than the US one, but then, you know, there's some that I think the vice versa is true, so it's, uh, you know, just the way it goes. But um, I haven't read this novel yet. I've been meaning to get to it. Um, it was also long listed for the Booker Prize, and, and I've heard so many great things about it, and I've, I've read her books before and really enjoyed them, so I've, I've been wanting to get to it. I've almost been saving this um, for, for like a good long weekend when I can read it and really get into it. There's Miracle Creek by Angie Kim, which is a novel I've seen a, sort of pop up on Booktube and people have been talking about it on Goodreads and stuff um, but I I um, yeah I don't think it's been out in the UK so I haven't had any access to it unless I was gonna order it from America so there's a number of books I'm um, just like that and the same goes for mostly dead things by Kristen Arnett at least as far as I'm aware um, this hasn't been published in the UK yet um, and I so I don't really know anything about it um, there's the nickel boys by Colson Whitehead it's a novel I really loved so much and I think it's criminal it's not gotten any prize attention so it's really great to see it uh, pop up on some of these best books of the year lists. Um, there's Normal People by Sally Rooney, um, which um, of course came out, I think it was last year in the UK. Yeah, it's um, sort of popping up in these US lists now, but, um, but was on a lot of people's best books of the year list last year that in the UK. Blah, I keep <laughs> switching back and forth. And I'm aware I'm mainly focusing on the, the UK and the US, um, but I know there are other places in the world, uh, but I'm just totally unaware of publication schedules um, elsewhere in the world. So yeah, I just mainly talk about this. But, um, but yeah, I love this novel too. But it's almost, I wonder why it's, there, there are certain novels which I, just become such a big thing and sort of feel like explode and, and everybody is reading them. And I, I think it's a really great novel, but there are other really great novels I think deserve that attention too. I was talking about this with a group of people last night and yeah, and I, I just can't really understand why that happens with certain books and not others. So I, I think it's interesting how that works, but, um, but I'm so glad that a lot of people are reading Sally Rooney. I've not heard of Nothing to See Here by uh, Kevin Wilson. Uh, but 
um, I love uh, Elizabeth Strout's new novel, All of Again, um, another book which is sort of basically interconnected short stories, and uh, but all focusing around a town in Maine, and I just love her writing style and loved meeting Olive Kitteridge again. Um, so, such a beautiful book. On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vaughn, um, another such a beautiful cover. I, I love the, the autumnal feel of, of, of uh, the UK cover. And uh, yeah, I need to get back to and finish reading this um, before the end of the year. I keep re remembering I need to get to it and then I like start other things and I just, yeah, it's sort of sitting there on my to be finished pile. <laughs> the Other Americans by Leila Lalami is a, is a novel I've been meaning to get to too. I've never read any books uh, by her but I've heard such great things about this and this uh, actually won a book prize. I can't remember the name of the book prize but it was one that um, Joyce Carol Oates was a judge on and um, and she really praised this this novel and so obviously I value her opinion so um, so uh, yeah I've been wanting to, to read this too and, and been wanting to read this author for ages. Um, there's Patsy uh, by Nicole Dennis Ben. It's a novel I've been wanting to read, and I, I heard that the writing is good, but but it's a um, much longer novel than it needs to be. And I'm always wary of books like that that um, that feel overly long because it feels like if a book is going to be long, then it really needs to justify its length. Um, there's Queenie uh, by Candace Carty Williams. It's a novel I really should have read because it's a UK author. I, I should have got to it and I, um, I just haven't read it yet um, even though I've heard really great things and um, it was fun. I went to a, a prize ceremony the, the other evening and Candice Carty Williams was there um, announcing one of the prizes and, and gave um, the winner a big hug. Then there is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, um, which is a novel I've been wanting to get to as well but just uh, haven't read yet. Um, and I, I don't really know anything about it and I've not read this author before, even though I have, I think, a few of her books but I've just um, yeah, just not got around to them yet. Searching for Sylvie by Jean Kwok. Um, this novel I haven't heard of, I don't really know anything about. Um, there's Supper Club by Laura Williams and I'm going to show the UK cover because I think the UK cover is much better for this. This is like really evocative, this like fist squeezing these blackberries um, but it's a, it's a book I've heard good things about and yeah I've been wanting to read. Um, the Revisioners by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. The Shadow King by Maga Majesty. Um, these are both books um, I don't really know anything about and haven't heard of, but I really like their, their covers. Uh, there's The Topeka School by Ben Lerner, um, a novel which has just been published and I've heard great, great things about and really shamefully I've never read Ben Lerner. I know he's a very well-regarded author and I love um, this particular edition which is um, it's, it has a leather bound or leather bound effect um, to it so it sort of seems like an important old style book um, even though you know it's brand new. There's Trust Exercise by Susan Choi and The Unpassing by Chia Chia Lin and I've heard great things about both of these books um, but, but not read them yet. I don't think they've been published in the UK. Women Talking by Miriam Taves. Um, it's a, another novel that was published in the UK last year and was one of my favorite books of last year, one of my top, absolute top books of last year, um, but uh, yeah, just came out in the US this year and I think it's such a brilliant, like really heartbreaking novel because it's based on such true circumstances, um, but um, so, so, so powerful and um, yeah, I keep meaning to read more by Miriam Taves. So then we get into the next section, uh, Suspense and Altered Worlds, and the first is American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson. Um, it's a novel I think has been published here, but I don't really know anything about it. I don't, I don't think it, it made much of an impact here, so I don't know, maybe it's been bigger in the US. Um, then there is Black Leopard, Red Wolf, another really long novel and one you know that I read at the very end of last year and just loved so much but is another one of those books that had so much hype around it and then when it came out there was a lot of disappointment from people and I, I sort of understand that. I really understand he's an author that isn't to everybody's taste and 
the different style he used with this novel uh, of a blend of fantasy and myth and folklore um, didn't really work for everybody, but I, I just loved the whole experience of it. I'd really like to reread this actually, and um, you know, reread it before the next book comes out. I mean, whenever that's gonna occur, I mean, I assume it might be another year or two before we see that. And it'll be interesting to see um, because with um, some of the negative reactions to this book, if he'll even continue with this exercise, I mean, you know, sometimes authors plan these, these big, huge trilogies of multiple books and then it just never comes into fruition. Then there's a few novels I don't really know anything about. There's uh, Bunny by Mona Awad, uh, there's The Chain by Adrian McKinty, uh, and The Farm by Joanne Ramos, which I know has been like a big best-selling book and I keep seeing advertisements for it everywhere but I don't really know anything about it. Is it slightly a dystopian type book or um, so I'm sort of intrigued by it, but, um, but yeah, I just don't really know anything about it. Inland by Taya Obrecht, and this novel I've been really wanting to get to, another one that I keep eyeing up in the shops, and I've heard such great things about it, um, especially because I like, I, I read her first novel and I enjoyed it, um, but I didn't think it was like that great. Um, it was sort of the winner of the the, the Women's Prize, or the I think it was still called the Orange Prize when she won it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it didn't make a huge impact on me, but I've heard from people who've read both of those books that this novel is much better. There's The Need by Helen Phillips, A Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, uh, and The Old Drift, by Nawali Serpel, and this is a, a novel I keep meaning to, to buy a copy of and, and read because yeah, I've heard really great things about the old drift as well. There's an or orchestra of minorities uh, by Chiagozi Obiyama, which is a novel I thought was fine, but um, by sort of I felt like I was talking about it a lot more critically around the Booker Prize because I just felt like there were a lot of other books that deserved the nod over this, especially not to be shortlisted, but um, but yeah, that, that was just my opinion. I know other people have really loved it and it's one of their favorite books of the year. So I think it's just one of those personal opinion things. Um, then there's uh, He Shot by Salman Rushdie and uh, yeah, another novel that I, well, I was, I was anticipating so much and I just felt really disappointed by and because talking around it, about it in the context of the Booker Prize, you know, I was just massively critical of it because I just felt like it really didn't deserve to be there. But I, I fully accept that he's just one of those authors that I just don't get on with. I think his writing style just isn't to my taste. And so I think it's a personal preference thing and, you know, other people highly regard him, but, um, but I, I feel like it's he's more become an institution that that people sort of defer to rather than sort of deserving that attention I mean especially with his his new books um, that really aren't pushing things forward I think as much as he likes to think that they are that's just my my opinion Recussion by Blake Crouch uh, The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern and this novel um, which has I think um, the, the UK cover is different from the US cover and the, the UK cover is really beautiful and this the um, the Waterstone special edition which has these um, on the side of the, the pages um, printed the, the symbols and um, yeah and I mean I've read the, the Night Circus with the book group um, many years ago and I thought it was fine I, I thought it was like a bit sort of overhyped um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be better or an improvement um, but, um, but yeah I'm curious to, to read it and, and to try it out. And then there is the joint winner of the Booker Prize, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. And, you know, been massively controversial because of that. I feel like if this had just come out and then and hadn't had this prize attention, people would have thought like, oh, yeah, this is a good novel. It's an interesting continuation. I mean, I'm sure some people would have still been really disappointed by it, but I feel like it's, it's a novel that has almost like suffered because it's had prize attention, which some people feel like hasn't been warranted. And so people are being more critical of it than, you know, if it hadn't had that. Most people agree, you know, that we love Margaret Atwood, we, we love what she does, and but I think it's it's more like praising her as an author than the accomplishment of this novel itself. Um, even though, you know, I think it does a lot of great things, it's definitely worth reading and, and really involving, but, uh, but yeah, just there are some things about it which um, just aren't as great as 
they could be. And there is The Water Dancer, um, Coates' first novel and had Oprah's book club and had so much anticipation around this and, and I'm really looking forward um, to reading it. I'm, I'm yeah, hoping to, to read this really soon. Um, so if, if you've read it and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below because yeah, I haven't seen anyone's reactions to it yet so I'm really curious. And there is Where Reasons End by Yi Yun Lee, a novel which I think really deserves more uh, attention because it's so beautiful and heartbreaking and, and just a uh, yeah, really incredible intimate story conversation between her, her uh, mother and um, her son who has passed away. And the next section is one I'm really curious about um, because I haven't um, really heard of a few of these novels so it's literature and translation and there's The Capital by Robert Manassi and um, yeah I just haven't heard of this. There's uh, China Dream by Ma Tien, um, and I've read a novel by Ma Tien before. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember enjoying it, um, but it obviously hasn't made much of an impact because I can't really m remember much about it, but, um, but yeah, so I'd be, I'd be curious to read this. Um, there's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Nobel Prize winning Olga Tokarczyk, and uh, yeah, I... Uh, you know, really enjoyed this novel. I thought it was very interesting. Um, the, the character at the center of it is one of these um, really difficult people. I mean, sort of like Olive Kitteridge um, that I really enjoy reading about, but I wouldn't want to meet her in real life because she's um, just a bit cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to go back and try reading again um, her novel, Flight. And then I think apparently next year, um, a really big novel of hers is just going to be is uh, just been translated and, and going to be published in English for the very first time. Then there's the uh, novel It Would Be Night in Caracas by uh, Karina Sainz Borgo, a um, novel I've not heard of at all before. Don't know if it's come out in the UK. The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa. Uh, this novel I just read and I think is so beautiful and brilliant um, how it's done and the way she discusses memory. Um, it's, it's sort of set up as like a dystopian novel but it's not just your like kind of traditional dystopian novel. I think it does something really different and interesting um, with her, her characters and the, the situation and, and uh, yeah it's really I think it's very like philosophical and what it does but at the same time it's a very entertaining absorbing story which is so difficult to do. Um, there's Stalingrad by uh, Vasily Grossman, um, just a novel I haven't really heard of and so I need to look into this and see if it's um, been published in the UK as well. And then the next section is short stories and poetry and, uh, and a poet I follow on Twitter um, in reaction to this list was really complaining that when these lists come out, um, so few poetry books appear on this. And, and yeah, and I think there's only three books of poetry in this, this group of book, books. And, um, and, you know, and I can understand, I mean, obviously he's a poet, so he, he would have that reaction. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it feels like um, there, there should be more room for poetry, and, but it does reflect our reading tastes um, that, you know, not as many people read poetry as they do novels. But I think that is something that's gradually changing as, you know, just the, the form of fiction um, is, is becoming a bit more loose. You know, there's like, there's a novel by Ocean Vaughn, which is very poetic because, you know, he sort of started out as a poet and his first book was a book of poetry. And so as these sort of forms shift and change over time, and like a, a, some of the novels I were talking about are more like books of short stories that, um, that, that yeah, it, it, it feels like um, these sort of strict um, definitions of what the form of a book doesn't really matter as much anymore. Anyway, the very first book is Everything Inside by Edwidge Donicott, um, which I hadn't realized that um, this author uh, published another book. Um, I, I have another book um, by, by Danica um, that I haven't read yet, um, but I've been meaning to read. So um, then there's Exhalation by Ted Chain, um, a, a book um, I've been really interested in wanting to, to get to. Um, there's Lot by Brian Washington, which um, the wonderful booktuber Matthew Sharapa sent this to me all the way from America. And guilty, I've not read it yet. I've been wanting to get to it and just um, haven't yet. So yeah, sorry, Matthew. I, I, I know I need to get to this before um, the end of the year. There is Magical Negro by Morgan Parker, a, a book I've not heard anything about. Um, a book of poetry called Oculus by Sally Wen Mao. 
uh, Sing to It by Amy Hempel. And I've read Amy Hempel's um, short stories before and really enjoyed them. So I'd, I'd uh, be keen to, to get a copy of this. And then there's another book, which is absolutely one of the most beautiful covers of the year, um, The Tradition by Jericho Brown. And I have another book of poetry by Jericho Brown, but I've not read it yet. I, I keep meaning to, to read his writing. Then the next section is memoir and essays. There's The Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Weijin Wayne, um, a book I've heard really great things about. And um, yeah, so I need to get a copy of that. Um, there's Dream Girls by Ali Wong, a Good Talk by Mira Jacob, How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. And I read uh, Saeed Jones' debut book of poetry, so it's interesting that he's written a memoir now. And I, I thought it was um, his uh, first book of poetry was good, so um, yeah, I'd be really curious to read this. Um, there's In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, and I loved her book of short stories so much. I mean, I know a lot of people had different reactions to it and um, weren't as keen on it, um, but, uh, but I, I thought they were so inventive and enjoyable and, um, and really playful, um, how she worked with language and story and characters and, and so inventive. So I'm so curious to read her memoir now. And um, I just got this advanced copy um, just the other day um, because it's not being published till the very beginning of January next year in the UK, but, um, but it's yeah, out in the US now. So um, yes, very, very keen to read this. There is Once More We Saw the Stars by Jason Green. Uh, there is Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness, and yeah, I'm a big fan of watching Queer Eye, and uh, and yeah, he's such an he's such an amazing person and character, and and uh, yeah, so I'd be I'd be I'd really enjoy reading this. Uh, there's The Source of Self Regard by Toni Morrison, um, and. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to read this sort of as a tribute to such a great and amazing author that we sadly lost this year. Uh, there's Survival Math by Mitchell S. Jackson, and I talked about this uh, book in a, a, a book haul I did recently. Um, it just came out in the UK, and I'm really keen and curious to, to read it. There is Trick by uh, Tressie McMillan Cottom. Uh, there's Trick Mirror by uh, Gia Tolentino. And uh, yeah, this is a book of essays that I've been really wanting to get to. I've heard such great things about it. The Undying by Anne Boyer. Uh, the Unwinding of the Miracle by Julie Yip Williams. Uh, the Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. And um, yeah, I've, I've not really heard anything about any of these books because um, I think a lot of these are books that have just been published in the US and not in the UK. So I'm not really familiar with them. So let me know if you think they're, they're worth like purchasing and having sent over the pond. I just have to pause and show off that there's this lovely fox in my garden um, who was distracting me um, while I was trying to talk to camera and read. Um, oh, isn't he so cute? He seems really fearless and, and it's really unusual to have a fox out in the middle of the day. Um, okay, back to talking about books now. <laughs> then there's a category I, of history and politics, which I find really useful because my father re loves reading history books, but I, I really don't read much history at all. So yeah, I, I look to this sort of as guidance of, of what I might buy him for his birthday or Christmas, because his birthday is in December as well as um, it being Christmas. So I always have to get, you know, sort of double presents for him. So it's, um, it's useful for that. So there's Edison by Edmund Morris. Uh, there's The Education of an Idealist by Samantha Power, The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by David Troer, uh, Midnight in Chernobyl by Adam Higginbottom, and uh, did anybody else watch the, 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 uh, the drama series uh, Chernobyl? Because um, I, I watched it, I was totally gripped by it, I mean, it was absolutely terrifying, but so powerful. So I, I'd really like to read more about that, that incident and that, um, that period of history. Uh, there's The Mueller Report by Robert Mueller, uh, Places and Names by Elliot Ackerman, uh, Stony and Road by Henry Louise Gates Jr., This Land is Our Land, and A Warning by Anonymous. The next section is Society and Science. Uh, there's The Age of Surveillance Capitalism uh, by Shahosa Zuboff, uh, Because Internet by Gretchen McAuliffe, Diversity Inc. by Pamela Newkirk, the Great Pretender by Susanna Callahan. How to Be an Anti-Racist by Imbran X. Kendi. Uh, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. 
How to Hold a Grudge by Sophie Hanna. And I love how there's sort of a group of books which are sort of purportedly, you know, like sort of help, self-help type um, books, or at least the, in the title, they, um, you know, make it sort of sound like that. So it's a sort of play on that whole genre. Um, Maybe You Should Talk by, to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb. The Moment of Lift by Melinda Gates. Uh, Self-Portrait in Black and White by Thomas Charlton Williams. Uh, the Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells, and this this uh, environmental book, which I keep meaning to get to because I've yeah, heard really good things about it, and I feel like a lot of people have been talking about it. Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, and I feel like this has been such a controversial book. I've heard so many mixed opinions of it, of some people who really liked it and some people who really haven't, so um, I think that's really interesting. Uh, Underland by Robert McFarlane. It's a, a book I keep wanting to get to, and I've just started reading it. Um, I've read the first couple chapters, and it's so beautifully written, and just the way he talks about our relationship with the environment, I think is really, really powerful. And then finally, there is True Crime and Journalism. And uh, so it starts off with Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow, Furious Hours by Casey Sepp, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, uh, My Friend Anna by Rachel Delosh Williams, uh, Say Nothing by Patrick Raiden Keefe, She Said by Jody Cantor and Megan Truly, and Things We Didn't Talk About When I Was a Girl by Gian Venasco. And I haven't heard of any of these books. I, mean, I don't think any of them have come out in the UK. Um, so yeah, that whole group of books I really have no idea about and um, yeah, aren't genres I, I normally read. So, um, so yeah, I do enjoy how lists like this like make me aware at least of books in these these other genres. So, so at least I can have you know some inkling of them um, if, if I ever want to try branching out and reading more of these books. Um, but let me know what you think of these, uh, this, this whole list of books. Um, if you think any of these books are your top books of the year, I mean, there's definitely other books that I'll be including in my end of the year list that aren't included here. So let me know what you think, um, or if you've seen any other best books of the year list that have already come out um, that you think are good, um, put the link in the description below, because uh, yeah, I just enjoy looking through these lists, you know, just sort of do sort of check marks against what I've read and what I haven't read and what I still want to read. Uh, so I'll speak to you again soon and uh, hope you're doing well and reading good things. Uh, have a good weekend everyone. Bye.